Two charges A and B are fixed 25 centimeters apart as shown below. Where should a third charge be placed such that it would be in equilibrium? So what does it mean for a charge or for anything to be in equilibrium? What does that mean? Well, equilibrium in physics means that there is no net force acting on that object. So no net force. So we need to find where should I keep a third charge in this universe where the net force due to these two charges, these two charges I wanna pull or push on it, but the total force on that should become zero. Now you may be wondering, well, why don't A and B push on each other? And they are doing that, but it's given that it's fixed in place, right? So you can imagine they're nailed down. But our third charge, you need to figure out where should I keep such that the net force over there should be zero. Now, before we, before we start, another way to think about it is we could say, look, if the net force has to be zero, that means the electric field at that point, the net electric field at that point must be zero, right? If an electric field at a point is zero, it means the net force over there is zero. So our question now, we slightly changed it. Our, our goal now is to figure out where in this universe is the total electric field due to these two charges zero. Now, you may be wondering, how do we do that? <laughs> Right? I mean, we know the formula to calculate electric field due to each charge. I mean, let's begin over there. We know that electric field equals KQ or R squared. And we know if there are multiple charges, then we use the superposition principle and add them up. But how do I know where are they gonna add up to become zero? I mean, how do I even begin thinking about it? So here's how we can start. For two, because there are two electric fields, for them to, you know, together cancel out, they have to be equal and opposite to each other. Think about it. If two vectors, electric fields are vectors, if two vectors have to cancel out, there's only one way for that to happen. They have to be equal and opposite. Based on just that, we can narrow down. We can narrow down where, our, where that point is going to be. For example, I know for sure with 100% certainty that at this point, electric field won't be zero. You know how do I know that? Because just think about it, the electric field created by charge A would be away from it along the line joining, and from B would be again away from it along the line joining. And forget about their magnitudes, these two are not in the opposite direction, so they will not cancel out. So I know electric field over here won't be zero. Similarly, electric field here also won't be zero, same reasoning, here also won't be zero. The only place electric field can be zero is when the two forces or two electric fields are along the same lines, along the same line, and that can only happen on the line joining A and B. So that's a good start. We now know it's not, not anywhere in the universe, it's got to be somewhere on this line joining A and B. Only there, there's a possibility the two field lines, the two field vectors can be equal and opposite. Does that make sense? Okay, but even here we can further narrow it down. See, on this line, there are three options. It can be somewhere towards the left of A, it can be somewhere in between A and B, and it can be somewhere towards the right. Where do you think it's going to be? And I, here I want you to pause the video and think a little bit about this. Use the same idea and see in which, three, which of the three regions can the electric fields be equal and opposite. Pause and try. All right, let's start in this region. If I pick some point over here, then what would happen when I add up the electric fields due to these two charges? Well, this charge is gonna produce an electric field away. This charge is also going to produce an electric field away. And notice they're in the same direction. They're not gonna cancel out. So there is no way electric field can be zero over here. So it's definitely not in this region. And similarly, I hope you agree, it cannot be in this region as well. Because again, if you consider any point over here, this is gonna push away, electric field is gonna be away. This is also gonna put electric field away. Both are positive charges. So anywhere you go on the right, electric field is now gonna become zero. But what if you consider somewhere in between? Again, pick some random point in between. And now if you consider the electric field due to this charge, and let's be a little bit more careful now, due to this charge, at this point, it's going to be away from there. So it's gonna be away. And the electric field due to this charge over here is gonna be away from that charge. So that's gonna be away and look, they are in the opposite direction. So it can cancel out somewhere over here. And therefore now we know that the electric field can be zero only somewhere between A and B. 
It's incredible, right? Even without doing any maths, just by logical deduction, we know in this entire universe, electric field can be only zero somewhere between A and B on the, on the line joining them, which is, I don't know, super powerful, right? It's super powerful. Okay, but now let's figure out exactly where that's going to be, so let's do the math. So let me get rid of all of that. So now I need to figure out, let's say that point is P, let me call that point as P. That is the point where the electric field is zero. The question is, where exactly that point is going to be? How do I figure that out? Well, whenever, like, you know, always, like how you do it in maths or physics, whenever you don't know something, we take that as X. So we want to know where this point is. That means we need to know its distance from A or its distance from B. So let's call that distance as X. So let's take this, let's, let's call this distance from A as X. And our goal now is to find what X is. But how do I do that? Well, I know the condition for point P, the electric field has to be zero, right? And that means the magnitude of the electric fields have to be equal to each other. So if I call this as the electric field due to A, because A is producing this, and I call this as the electric field due to B, EA in magnitude, EA in magnitude should equal EB. I'm only considering the magnitude, I'm not considering the direction. We've already taken care of the direction, they're opposite. So their magnitude has to be equal to each other. And for that, and, how, and how, I mean, what do we do next? <laughs> well, we know electric field formula. So we can plug in and we can hope to calculate X. So again, good idea to pause and see if you can try and arrive at the value yourself. All right, let's do this. So electric field U to A is going to be KQ by R square. So it's gonna be K. I'm not going to substitute, you'll see why. K into Q, Q is the charge due to A. So that's gonna be two nano coulomb. Again, I'm not gonna substitute for nano and you will see why. <laughs> Divided by R squared, R, you need to be careful, there are too many distances over here, <laughs> let's not get confused. R is the distance from the charge to that point. We're considering A, so from A to that point, that's X, that's what we want. So divided by X. So that equals, what is EB? EB is going to be K, Q, Q is the charge at B, again I'm not gonna, can you see why I'm not substituting? Can you can you see now? <laughs> Divide by R square, what's R for, for this charge? Well again, R is a distance from this charge to that point, and that distance is, well the whole thing is 25, so this is X, so this is gonna be 25 minus X. So that's going to be 25 minus X, or oh, the whole square, I forgot to square it. There's a square over there, KQ by R square. Okay, and again, notice that this is in centimeters. We need to be always careful about the units, but I'm not gonna worry about it, and you'll see why now. I mean, I'll do it, I'll tell you why now. Because when you're equating, you can cancel stuff out. So K cancels, nano cancels. The centimeter square and the centimeter square over here also cancels, so I don't have to worry about anything. The Coulomb cancels, all the units cancel out. Okay, so that's great. So all of those things cancel out. So what remains now is just pure algebra. So I have, let me rewrite that over here. So I have two over x squared equals 18 divided by 25 minus x, the whole squared. And so I can, two goes nine times, and I can take square root on both sides because there is a square. So I get one over x equals three over 25 minus x. And just to save space, I'm gonna do it over here now. So just algebra, 25 minus x equals 3x. So 25 equals 4x. So x equals 25 divided by four. And that is four, six are 24, 0 0.10, 4 twos are eight, 6.25. 6.25 what? Well, we canceled everything out. It has to be centimeters, right? Because, that, because the distances were in centimeters. So we know this is 6.25 centimeters, and there we go, we have our answer. X equals 6.25 centimeters. So that point P is 6.25 centimeters from A, and that's the place where if you keep a third charge, it's gonna be in equilibrium, it's gonna stay in equilibrium. And if you notice something, you can see that that point, like we drew, we drew over here, we didn't draw it properly, um, it's not at the midpoint, it's very close to point A. So that point actually somewhere should be somewhere over here. 
And then if you think about it, that kind of makes sense because for the magnitudes to cancel out, because B has a higher charge, you need to be farther away from it. So hopefully it kind of makes sense that our point that we were looking for is actually closer to A compared to B. All right, how about we try one more just to check our understanding. And this is fun also, right? So almost, almost the exact same question, except let's say I make this charge negative. Okay, what do you think is gonna happen? Let's do the same process again, but a little faster. We now know, we can guess, that has to be the point of equilibrium where the electric field is zero. That point has to be, again, somewhere on the line joining these two charges. But again, where is it gonna be? Do you think it's gonna be the same as before? Or maybe somewhere else? Again, can you try and pause and think a little bit about this? All right, let's do the same exercise again. Let's start with this point, somewhere over here. If I take some point over here, now this charge, well, it's gonna electric, put the electric field away from it. And this charge, because it's negative, it's gonna put the electric field towards it. Hey, so it's possible, it's possible that they can cancel out over here, right? So this is one possibility. What about in between? Let's, let's check in between. If I check somewhere over here, from A, the electric field is going to be away from it. And due to B, the electric field is gonna to be towards it. So over here, now, in between, they're gonna add up. So electric field cannot be zero now. Ooh, things have changed dramatically. Interesting, so this is not gonna be the place. What about over here somewhere, let's see. Due to A, electric field is gonna be away, and due to B, electric field is gonna to be towards. So yeah, even here, they may cancel out. So now comes an interesting question, where do you think, in which region do you think the electric field would be zero? Maybe it might be zero in both? No, if you, if you, if you see carefully, we can use something that we learned earlier. See, in order for the electric field to be zero, not only is it enough that they are, um, they're in opposite direction, their magnitudes have to be equal as well, right? So if I consider this point over here, Notice that this point will always be closer to point B, the bigger charge, compared to the smaller charge. Since the bigger charge, since this point is always bigger to the big, closer to the bigger charge, this electric field will always be, always be bigger than the electric field produced by this charge. Does that make sense? Think about it. Wherever you go, I will always be closer to the bigger charge. These two will never cancel out. So this is impossible. This can't happen. But over here, it's possible. I can, I can have some point where it is so close to that this small charge, even though the charge is small, it's close to it, so that the electric field due to this one and this one can cancel out, okay? Now again, the next question is, where exactly is it going to be? And we're gonna do the same exercise and we're gonna do it a little quicker now. So let's say that point is P. And again, we don't know where that point is. We're gonna call that distance as X x, and now again the condition over here is electric field at p to be zero, we need electric field due to a in magnitude should equal the electric field due to b. And in the spirit of time, I've already done my calculation, I'm just gonna show you what we get, and again, feel free to do this yourself first. So just a, one thing you might notice over here is I haven't put the negative sign because I'm only considering the magnitude. The negative sign is only to check the direction. So for magnitude, I don't have to consider the signs, and over here, it's gonna be 25 plus x because it's so far away from b. And then if I, simp if I simplify, which you can just pause and see, you will get the answer to be 12.5 centimeters. So that means x in this case is 12.5 centimeters to the left of a. That's where the electric field is zero, so if I keep any third charge over here, it's going to be in equilibrium.